So, you want to learn about muscles, hey? Well, in the human body, you have 600 to learn. Yeah, 600. 600. That is a lot of time. I could be doing so much with my life. I could be traveling, finally read a book for the first time, maybe even have a family, two dogs and a cat, make cute videos for TikTok displaying their adorable friendship. <laughs> you might be asking, is there a way to save time and efficiently learn all of the information related to the 600 muscles in the human body? There is. Today we are going to give you some tips and tricks to help make this process a little easier. And one of those tips includes a little surprise that we have prepared for you. Get ready to become an anatomy muscle pro in no time. Learning the muscles of the human body is no easy task. It is not just about learning each muscle's unusual or long complicated names, which is hard enough in itself. But in order to fully appreciate muscle anatomy, it is also necessary to understand each muscle's origins, insertions, actions, and innervations. I know, right? It's a lot. If you have never learned muscle anatomy before, you may be wondering what all those terms mean. The origin and insertion of a muscle refers to its attachment points. The origin is usually the more proximally located attachment point, while the insertion tends to be the more distal attachment. We can see these two points in this image on the screen. The action of a muscle simply refers to the motion that occurs when the muscle contracts. For example, when the vastus medialis muscle contracts, extension of the leg at the knee occurs. Finally, the innervation of a muscle simply refers to the nerve fibers which supply each muscle facilitating its movement. Now that we know what all of those terms mean, I am going to share five top tips to help make the grueling process of learning muscle anatomy a little easier. Tip number one, learn muscles by body region. Dividing the muscles into separate regions, such as the muscles of the head and neck, upper limb, lower limb, and trunk, helps to develop our knowledge of where each muscle is situated. Muscles within regions often work together and therefore may have common similarities, reducing our study time and making for more efficient learning. Tip number two. Subdivide muscles into component groups. So yeah, as you can see, dividing and conquering can be a good strategy when learning muscles. We went from splitting them into regions. Now the goal here is to subdivide them into groups. Groups of muscles within regions may have similar actions, attachments, or innervations such as the flexor compartment of the forearm. The muscles within this group typically function to flex the wrist and receive similar innervation. Some of the muscles from the flexor group even originate from the same location. So as you can see, learning the muscles by groups will aid in developing your knowledge of surrounding structures and will help you to identify the many similarities across adjacent muscles, making your study easier. Tip number three, learn the attachments of the muscle first. Identifying the origins and insertions of each muscle can give us more information than you think. For example, let's take a look at the brachialis muscle. This muscle originates from the anterior surface of the humerus and extends over the elbow joint to insert onto the coronoid process and tuberosity of the ulna. Look at its attachment points and even try to picture the attachment points on your own arm. What movement do you think this muscle would facilitate on contraction? Now, muscles help move joints. We have a joint between the two attachment points, so the brachialis muscle would help in flexion of the forearm at the elbow joint 100%. So sometimes knowing the attachment points of a muscle will give you all the clues that you need 
to guess its function. Tip number four. Take a look at each muscle's name. The name of a muscle can sometimes give us a hint to its attributes. For example, when I tell people that my name is João, they usually think... Addicted to anatomy, no social life, needs to get out of the house more. Okay, but muscles are different. For example, let's take a look at the biceps brachii muscle. Bi means two, while seps comes from the Latin word caput, meaning head. Brachii is the Latin word for arm, therefore indicating that this is a two-headed muscle located on the arm. Some muscles even tell us what structures they attach to by their name, such as the sternocleidomastoid muscle, which attaches to the sternum, clavicle, and mastoid process of the temporal bone. Finally, tip number five, or thinko. Learn with muscle charts. Muscle charts combine all the information that you need to know about each muscle into one place. Use muscle charts that are grouped together by regions, as you can see. Having the origins, the insertion, innervation, and function of each muscle displayed in an organized chart will aid in simplifying your learning and is a great resource to have. This will save you from wasting time flipping through textbooks trying to find each muscle. Speaking of muscle charts, remember the surprise I promised you in the beginning of this video? Well, we here at CanHub have put together a no-nonsense, easy-to-use, fast-learning, knowledge-soaring muscle anatomy blaster to help you get to grips with the hundreds of muscles in our bodies. Yes, I am talking about our fabulous muscle anatomy reference charts. They have been validated and aligned with all the big anatomy textbooks in order to create an ultimate anatomy reference cheat sheet that you can easily use to learn all those muscles. The muscle anatomy reference charts have been conveniently divided into four separate regions. Muscles of the upper limb, lower limb, head and neck, and one on the muscles of the trunk wall. Each of these charts subdivide the muscles of that region into separate component groups, making your revision a million times easier. So without further ado, let's take a look at one of these charts now. For example, we'll look at the upper limb muscle chart. So as you can see, the muscles of the upper limb are divided into separate groups such as the rotator cuff muscles, muscles of the shoulder and arm, anterior and posterior forearm muscles, and so on. Next to each muscle, you'll find its origins, insertions, innervations, and functions. So let's say you wanted to learn the anatomy of the coracobrachialis muscle. Well, the coracobrachialis is is a muscle of the anterior arm. Let's see if we can find it, and here we go. So as you can see, the coracobrachialis muscle originates from the coracoid process of the scapula, as its name suggests, and extends to insert onto the anteromedial surface of the humeral shaft. What is this muscle innervated by? Well, by the musculocutaneous nerve. And hey, as you can see, the muscles of the anterior arm also receive innervation from the musculocutaneous nerve. See, I just saved some time looking at this chart and learning this information about not just the coracobrachialis, but other muscles. Now finally, what happens when this muscle contracts? Well, if it originates at the coracoid process and inserts on the humerus, it extends over the glenohumeral joint. Contraction of this muscle therefore flexes and adducts the arm at the shoulder. Not too hard at all, right? And if you are having trouble visualizing what the coracobrachialis muscle looks like, all you have to do is scroll up and hey, presto. There it is. Now, before you go, let me quickly show you how you can get your hands on these fabulous muscle charts. 
All you have to do is click on the link in the description box, which will take you to our website. Scroll down and pick which muscle chart you want. All our charts are available to purchase in both English and Latin terminologies. And if you scroll here, you can find a gift waiting for you. The lower limb muscle chart is available entirely for free. Oh yeah. You can just download these muscle anatomy reference charts to have on your device or print them out to use whenever or wherever you need them. Now you are ready to take on hundreds of muscles, get your hands on those charts and get learning. You'll save a lot of time and be able to do other things that make you happy like walking on the beach or something like that. Remember to also subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this one. Don't forget to also like the video to let us know that you enjoy this type of content. Comment down below to tell us what other anatomy tips and tricks you'd like to see. Until then, I will see you next time. Dramatic. Very telenovela. Very dramatic. Ooh, it's caliente up in here. Conquering. Conquering. But when I tell, when I tell, for example, when I tell, Adios, people. It's nice seeing you. Bye.